Hi folks, this is Tristan for Noisegate. Today we're taking a first look at the Korg Mod Wave 1.1 update. Uh, so there are many new features here, including support for and the release of this nice new graphical editor software. So very similar to what we saw with the Wave State 2.0 update recently. And now Mod Wave has its own dedicated editor software. Because as functional as these synths are via the front panel, they're very deep and they have a lot of parameters. So whenever you want to dive into it and do some really deep editing, it's really nice to have this big graphical user interface to work with. I should note it's not actually running as a plugin, I just have Ableton Livery in the background there for some drums. Uh, but anyway, looking through the interface on the top right, you can choose whether you want to look at the editor here or the librarian. So the librarian is where you manage all your presets. These are big performance presets, but also things like individual programs, chaos physics presets, uh, motion sequence or land presets, even individual effects presets. So it's pretty amazing how much content there is here. There's a lot of people put a lot of work in here. You can look at everything here in the all data list, which is just about everything except for the samples. Uh, so one of the new features of the 1.1 update is the ability to load your own user samples. And they're actually handled via the sample builder application. So just the same as WaveState, you load your samples in here, map them across the keyboard, add loop points, organize them into banks, then export. Works just the same way as it does with the WaveState. So back over here in the editor, one thing you'll notice is just how accessible everything is. Uh, things like chaos physics parameters, uh, things that are normally tucked under menus are all right here on the surface. Uh, so really nice, really accessible, and it gives you a good idea of just how deep the synth is. There's a lot of stuff to look at here. Um, over in the effects section, you can see each effect processor normally has five or six uh, parameters to tweak. Uh, however, you can click the edit button to access even more. So if you look at something like a guitar amp simulator, if you click edit, you can see it's actually a full guitar amp under the hood with different preamp models, uh, different speaker emulations. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. So this is even more parameters than you get access to via the hardware. So you can do all your deep editing here, then save it, export over to the synth, and then tweak away like a regular hardware synth. I know with the wave state, one area where people really appreciated having a graphical editor was the sequencer. And it's the exact same here with the mod wave. We can see all seven lanes of the motion sequencer plus the master lane if you turn it on. And you can jump straight to individual steps, tweak their parameters right from the step itself. Really nice, really straightforward. And I really appreciate having this with the shape lane because on the hardware, you can only really look at one step at a time. Uh, with the graphical editor, you can see all the steps before and after the one you're currently looking at to give a better idea of how that lane works as a sequence. Uh, I'm just gonna load up a preset which has a bit of motion sequencing going on. As I play a node, you'll be able to really easily hear and visually see what's happening with the shape lane. Okay, we'll get that sort of ominous warble at the beginning, then a static line, then two kind of rhythmic shapes at the end. Okay, we can dive into that second step and let's try a different shape here. That's a bit uninspired, let's try something like an exponential sweep up. Hey, that's pretty cool. So you can see it's a really nice way to work with these sequences as a whole. We can tweak the melody here as well. Let's take this down to a, uh, let's try a minor third. Take that one down to a second. And this one down to maybe a seventh. We can add another step on the end as well. Let's use these half notes for all these steps. I'm just gonna copy and paste them. And actually let's change these last two to quarter notes. Then I'm just gonna extend the timing lane up to that fifth step and do the same for the pitch and the shape lane. And now let's change that last note to, let's take an add an eighth. Uh, let's have a listen to that. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Got something going on there. Now it'd be nice if we could layer the synth with another part. And of course we have two layers here to work with. Uh, let's go over to our keyboard setup section and let's just restrict that first part just up to this top octave here. There we go, about there. And let's restrict the second layer down to the lower half of the keyboard. Cool, that should do it. Uh, let's move over to layer B and let's find a preset to work with here. I'll uh, sort them by category. Uh, let's go this way. And the sequence of bass is what I'm after. How about this one, freeway chase. Let's have a listen. That's cool. Maybe a little washed out in reverb. Uh, let's back that off a little bit.
That's any better. Let's add a bit of movement to that filter cutoff. Let's add a bit of LFO movement. Maybe I'll slow that LFO down a little bit. Hey, that's sounded pretty good. Uh, let's try layering the two of them together. It's not saying too bad. Uh, let's try bringing in some drums from Ableton Live. I'm just going to turn it on hold here. Okay, well thanks for watching, this has been a quick first look at the Korg ModWave 1.1 update. Uh, please leave any questions or comments down below and stay tuned for more videos coming soon.